Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's been a while since my last upload, but I'm uploading this because I just got a really good score on Diverse World No Moving High Score. This was the first round, pretty obvious one, State of Alaska, Cold Foot Station. So at least we know pretty much exactly where we are, should be an easy one. I zoom in on this because I see another Google car, it looks like, behind us, and I hadn't ever really seen that before. Um, so anyway, I just have a look around, I just double check the way the place looks, State of Alaska, Coldfoot Station, and I should go into the map soon. I think I'll read that first, but I don't think we really need to even see that. Um, something about facilities, Coldfoot. So we get in there, uh, we go into Alaska, I start looking around and I think, well, if it's called Coldfoot Station, it should be quite north, there's another sort of station thing there. So I go up a little further north, and you could probably see it there. Um, it takes me a while to find it, but eventually I see it, and I go in, and it's quite small. There's an airport there as well, which is um, interesting. But we go in, we have a look, we find it. I'm trying to work out with the roads, sort of where we are. I think that's the intersection we're at, and I guess it, and it's the intersection over. So we lost one point there, but not the end of the world. Now this one, um, you can probably see right away there at the intersection, maybe you saw it, there were road signs and I didn't even see it right away. Uh, I start looking around, I see the English, I look at the Google car because I'm not the greatest with the Google cars and um, you know I, I have a look at that and I think I was thinking oh it'd be great if the country name was there. Uh, I'm looking around. Um, that sign I thought was interesting. Drive carefully, recklessness kills. That's quite direct. Um, I'm looking around. I look at the school sign there. Uh, looks like that guy's knocked it over. Uh, secondary school, it says. I couldn't make out what it said at the beginning. I still hadn't seen those road signs yet, so I wasn't really sure where we were. So I'm just looking around. I'm looking for clues. I think I go over to those shops over there. Uh, the quality is quite bad, so you can't really see much. It says Eldo Star on the top, but that's about it. I come around, I have a look over here, and I look at that sign, and it says, what is it? Wan Jenga Tailoring. And I think, well, maybe Wan Jenga is the place where we are. Could be. And I'm looking to see if I can see the same name somewhere else. I don't see it. Uh, and eventually, you're going to see, I'm looking at all these signs, I pan over, and I'm, eventually, I'm going to see the road signs. And I was thinking, oh, look, Longo National Park, and then I see it. I see the road signs. I don't know how I didn't see them right away, but I saw them. So we got Nairobi, which is to the south. And I think in my mind before I saw those, I was thinking, well, I'll just hedge Nairobi and go there. Um, but we got Nairobi to the south. We So I get, get in there, look for the B3, um, 42 kilometers away. So I go into Nairobi, it's to the south, then I see the B3. So I throw the man down, or throw the marker down. Then I look in the other direction, and we've got something called Naivasha. Naivasha, or something like that. 34 kilometers away on the C88. So we must be somewhere in the middle. I look around, I see Naivasha there. I put the man there just to see it. And I kind of follow the roads down and um, try and figure out where we are. Then I see the, the other sign there that says something beginning with an L. Um, I can't really even see it now. Lee something. And there's one more sign that says Narok is down some other road. So I follow that B3 and there's Narok. So we must be on that intersection. Um, probably could have just gone for it right away, but I just wanted to take my time. Had a look. There's a gas station there. The way the roads were, there's another gas station on the other side. So I was a bit confused for a second. Then I checked the compass and realized, okay, we're on the other side. We're looking south at that little T-junction, and that must be where we are. And I think I eventually throw it in there. Um, I think I was kind of talking a little bit as I was doing this, but not like proper commentary. Right, number three was quite a tricky one, as in there's no sign. There's a gas station down there, total. But that was basically it. Um, obviously Africa again, I wasn't really sure, I was just having a look around in case there were any little signs or something. Uh, I, I don't really know things about the bollards and, and all that, or the 
you know the posts but I guess it's Eswatini that's my my guess it kind of looks a bit like Eswatini a little bit hilly uh, quite dry and so I just go into Eswatini most of the time when I get Eswatini I get near the capital which is Mbam Mbabane or something so I guess close to there and it's close enough and we've got a pretty good score from that as well um, I think I'm just sort of quite shocked that it actually was Eswatini and I got relatively close. On to number four. Now four is the one I think I spent the most time on. And the reason for that is this is South Korea and I live in South Korea. And so I'm basically just having a look around and I can read Korean. So I'm looking at all these signs and I'm just trying to make sure that everything that I see in Korean, I can just rule out and say, no, that is not a place name, nothing like that. Um, so I'm looking at all these signs. I see this one here on the left, it's a kind of yellow one. I come around here, have a look at this shop. Um, that on the left, the yellow one, that's not it. Um, that just tells you it's a, uh, I think I was actually talking because I was gonna try and commentate over it and I hadn't really been doing that. Um, but that basically is like a pool, a place for playing pool and there's a restaurant there. I see the at the beginning it says Chongyong, and I think I saw that on another sign as well. And so I thought, oh, maybe that's the place name, because it's also at the top. That, what I'm looking at there, looks like it also says Chongyong. And you can kind of see that in English above that. If you look above the sign, they've got it in, in English. So I'm thinking, well, maybe Chongyong is the place name. It's up there as well. They've blurred that out, so that's probably or it probably says the same thing or something similar. Uh, I look around, I'm trying to see if I can see some road signs, because you do get a lot of road signs in Korea, in, in Korea that are blue and they're, they're sort of hanging from the some sort of wire or pole. Nothing over there. So I come back here, I look up here, I was trying to see if I could see the same word, Chongyong, which could have been the place name. I'm looking around even more. Um, I'm on a good score, so I'm wary of that, and I just want to take my time. And I'm sort of looking around, and I see on the left that yellow sign that I'm, my mouse is on now says Dunne, Dunne. And then on the right, I don't think my mouse is on it now, but on the right is a blue sign that says the same thing. There, I've got my mouse on it. And that says Dunne something Pekwajom. So that Pekwajom means department store. That's not a department store, just a small store. But I think Dunne or Chongyong is going to be the place name. Um, it's quite mountainous. That's what I'm looking at now. I'm just looking at the sort of background. I zoom in on that because a lot of villages in Korea, or you get these road, these like house signs, building signs everywhere. But if you're in a very small town or village like this is, it's more than likely going to contain the name of the place at the beginning. Um, and we'll see that in a minute when I eventually do find it. So I zoom into Korea. I live in Seoul, but I guess this is the Kangwon area, which is on the sort of east coast or the east side of the country, northeast. And the reason I think that is I have visited some places around here and I've sort of been through it and so I know it's it's very mountainous like this you do get a lot of these little small villages or towns I come back to this Dunne and the reason I'm doing that is because I couldn't figure out if it was you know the, the spelling of it I didn't know if I said Dunne or Dunne if you can read Korean you'll you'll know what I mean there or Munne or something but I basically got Dunne and I've got Chongyong in my mind and I'm thinking it's going to be one of these little tiny things. See the little small villages? I'm thinking it's going to be one of those. So I think I start going around looking at some. Um, and then I eventually go back up again, right up to the top corner on the border with North Korea. And I just start working my way down. Uh, I, I realize this is fruitless doing this, just randomly looking at stuff. So now what you're about to see is me go up to the top and I'm just going to start searching. That's all I'm doing. Um, so yeah, there I go. That black line is the border with North Korea. So I'm coming down and I'm, there's nothing really to say here. 
I'm just coming down and I'm looking at every little place name that I can see looking for either Tunde or Cheongyong. Um, so this is kind of boring, so maybe there's not really much else to talk about here. Um, maybe a bit about myself, I don't know. I've lived in Korea for eight years now. Um, I'm not fluent in Korean, but I can read it well enough to and speak it well enough to sort of get by and live. Um, so whenever I get a Korea round on Diverse World or, or another map, uh, I'm always quite pleased because I've, I, I know I've got a pretty good chance of getting it more than, more than other players who, you know, haven't been here or haven't ever lived here. Um, you know, especially if it's a big city, because I, most of the big cities I tend to know, you know, what the regions are and things like that. Anyway, I'm, I'm following roads here. Uh, this area of Korea is very, very mountainous. Um, as you can tell by the, the sort of the landscape and the way it looks. But as you can see, you get a lot of these little tiny villages that, you know, only have a few hundred people or a few thousand people. Um, what I tend to do when I'm doing this sort of searching is I throw the man down just to sort of mark where I am or where I've got to, just to make sure I don't kind of go over the same, the same area. Um, yeah, there's, there's, not a, there's not a whole lot to say about this. Um, this is kind of boring. Um, I'm just searching and I do eventually find it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of get back to talking about this after um, after I found it, but um, yeah. So yeah, I haven't posted on on my YouTube channel for quite some time. I've been quite busy with I've moved house, um, a lot of work, a lot of big changes in the company I work in, and um, so that's you know kind of taken up a lot of my time. Um, so I haven't really uploaded anything, um, but I have been playing. You know, I do I do play most days. Um, we're coming over here on the on the left side to a place called Yang Yang, and Yang Yang is quite well known for you know, a lot of great seafood there, uh, surfing things like that. It's a, quite a popular uh, tourist destination in Korea. But as you can see here, there's so many little towns or little sort of areas nearby, and so I'm just searching all of those now. I don't even know if Dunne or Cheongyong is is the place, or even if it is a place. Um, but I figure I'm on 14,953 now. I should probably take my time and try and find it. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna be trying to basically get on a lot of the world record leaderboards uh, on the GeoTips website. Uh, this is my uh, sort of attempt, uh, and you'll see my score at the end. Uh, we, we end up getting on that leaderboard um but anyway where are we so we're yeah we're kind of halfway down the country um i think i look over to the other area which is called kyonggi which is the um like the suburb area that surrounds the city of seoul um and i i think to myself right i'll that's where i'll check after i've checked this kangwon area kangwon do it's called um so anyway, I'm still searching. I'm still looking at place names. Um, I'm starting to get a little sort of frustrated because um, I can see some places that look, you know, like they could be the place. Uh, I think we're getting close to it here. Um, as I said, this is really mountainous. So all I'm really doing is trying to follow the roads um, and just looking at all the little places. I think we're getting very close to it and I think I miss it. I don't see it right away. Um, I don't see it right now as I'm as I'm as I'm looking at this. Um, there's Pyeongchang. Pyeongchang was the host of the Winter Olympics. I think it was maybe three years ago. Was it about three years ago? Uh, and it's very close to this place, which is called Gangneung, which is another uh, very popular tourist place for Korean people if they want to take a you know a weekend break. Uh, to the seaside, uh, that's a popular place to go, especially for people from Seoul, because you can drive it in maybe three hours. 
Anyway, and I come back here, that's a big national park. Uh, I start coming down and I'm, I'm getting quite close to it. I think it's very, very close to Pyeongchang. Um, but I'm just sort of re recovering old ground here. Um, I know this is really boring to watch, uh, so thank you for still watching. <laughs> Feel free to fast forward this. Uh, I do eventually find it. Uh, so we're coming down. Um, I can see there's Hong Chan and Hwang Song, um, and then there's Pyeongchang, and so I'm just sort of keeping those in my mind for my sort of rough area as to where I am. Still looking at the places. Um, yeah, we, we can't be that far away from when I, when I do eventually find it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a go at a couple of other uh, world record attempts. Um, I want to try the UK speed run. Um, my, my time for that is really long, but I think with a bit of uh, practice, I can get it. So, okay, we found it. Oh, I've, I can see it now. You can probably see it. It's quite big, right in the middle there, Tunne Myon. And I miss it, and I'm going left, and I see Pyeongchang again. And then I think I eventually glance over and I see it. And so I know that's where we are. And that must be the place. You know, if I've done all this searching and I've found that, uh, we have to go for it. So, yeah, I think I get away from it here. Maybe I go even further over uh, and I come back and I eventually see it. It's on the left there next to that Interstate 50 sign. But it takes me a little while. Um... I think my eyes were just like, you know, hurting, but there we go, I find it. So we get in there, and as I said, it's quite a small place. Um, and I'm trying to figure it out. I come back to look at the regular map here. And I'm just looking at the roads, and I'm thinking, this looks pretty central. That looks like quite a main road, just coming up there. So we're close to some kind of intersection. And I think when I come back to the map, oh no, I'm looking for that. Yeah, I see the name of this. Cheongyong Makguksa, Makguksu, and Guksu means like soup type or noodle soup thing, I think. Um, so I'm trying to look at the roads. I'm looking for that place name. As I said, I was talking during this because um, I, was, I was just going to try and commentate over it, but I didn't really talk that much. Uh, I could release that version if you want to hear that, but um, yeah. There's not really much else to do here. I'm just trying to look at the roads. I'm just trying to think, where are we? Um, we're not going to lose that many points from this. So I'm also a little bit sort of nervous about the last round because if we get some forest in the middle of nowhere, then it's over. So I think, is this the center or is the other side the center? And I think the other side is. And I think that's where I end up going, I think. Do I end up going there or do I go here? I think I end up going the other side. Maybe it's, maybe I just end up going here. What did, I, what, what did I do? This was a little while ago I did this, so... Yeah, I think I end up going for the other side because I thought that kind of looks more square and then to the other side of us is a bit more of a main... like a main road. So I go for it and it turns out we're on the other side of that. So maybe I was looking the wrong way. Okay, here's the last one. This one, um, I don't know where we are, right? I can see Swan Street. It's the UK for sure. I zoom in on the number plate, I think, because it's not being blurred out. Looking at the bin, looking at the car. Obviously, this is the UK, right? It's pretty obvious. Red post box, red phone box over there. Um, but I am wary of the fact that my score is really good at the moment. And if I can you know, find a clue that will let us know where this is, then I should go for it. I'm looking at the bin, nothing there. It looks like England, right? It's not, it doesn't look like Scotland. This is not Scotland. I'm looking at that for sale sign and I can't read it. That would be great if we could. That might give us a town or something that I can go and search for. I'm looking at the buildings. I'm even looking in the windows um, and there's nothing. I come back, I look at the bin again, I look at, there's a sign there, and I couldn't make it out, Sardiner's Lane, or maybe Gardiner's Lane, I wasn't sure. But I'm looking at it, and I'm just scrolling, I'm double checking, I'm thinking, are there any clues that I've missed here? Is there anything that is obvious that I'm not seeing? 
basically. I'll go back to the for sale sign just to see if I could make it out and I can't. And so you, you can see there we got Swan Street. That sounds like a very English name. I'm thinking in my mind, this is England. It's probably quite Southern England. This is not, doesn't look like a very Northern town. It looks like a lot of small towns I've maybe been to in England in the past. Um, but this is ridiculous now. I'm looking around and I'm, I'm just looking for something. When do I go into the map? Um, come on, move the goddamn mouse. So I go into the map. Um, I'm thinking south. It's not London, obviously. It's more like a little village nearby. So I end up clicking, I think it's like southeast of London. Or is it, yeah, I go northeast there, then I click southeast. So, uh, sort of between Seven Oaks and Maidstone there. I'm thinking, mm, that looks all right. Could be somewhere there. I'm about to go for it, and then I realize, no, maybe I, I'm on a good score here. Maybe I should go a little bit further north above London, because then we're kind of hedging. If it is a bit more north, we're not going to lose as many points. Um, but if we go down south and it is further north, we're going to lose more points. So I end up clicking around there, around Milton Keynes, and then I just go for it. Um, there's not really much else to do. Turns out we were pretty close, 46 kilometers away, not bad. And there's the summary, 24830. Pretty good score. Not a perfect score, um, but pretty good. Um, I think I zoom into each of them because I realize I probably want to talk about them one more time. That was quite an easy one. Um, seeing the, the sign and the place name and, and you know, easy enough to get. Um, and there's not a lot of places around there. I think that's what I was thinking. Number two was also relatively easy once I found those road signs, which I didn't see at first, but I probably should have zoomed right in on that if it was a T-junction. So that one was pretty easy. I think here I'm just zooming into them because I know I'm going to talk about them later. This one was just a good guess. Um, looked like Eswatini. Uh, it was definitely Africa. Looked like that. Hedged roughly where I thought it could be. Four took forever, but we finally got there in the end. Um, and that was just a case of seeing a couple of things that I thought looked like the place name and just going for it. And then obviously number five, we weren't right next to it, but we kind of guessed in the right area. So that was pretty good. Um, I go to the game breakdown and that's it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed um, this video uh, and see you in the next one.